Welcome back to Gran Jacamito in the Pedroche Valley of Andalusia, Spain. We have started to selectively make rain. And we do this by, for example, sprinklers like this one here. This comes directly from the well. And we are basically relocating the water from one place to another. And the idea is to keep this well fed here and at the same time make sure in a little while that the water will also go out here and fill up the trench so that the vetiver that is in the trench that you cannot see but it goes all the way there to the end where the um yeah where where that fruit tree is that also this vetiver gets a little bit additional moisture because we want to grow mulch so that we can cut it later and uh, make soil in this wannabe food forest and without water nothing grows so we need to add a little bit until the soil is able to retain enough which will take a while but uh, those are steps in the right direction this is now a somehow temporary installation later when we don't need this anymore we put a post here and some connection for a garden hose so we can rinse off something here or whatever but this is good for now so this here is the sad side we managed to grow something but as you can see there is a sunflower on the ground there is another one there is a little bit and there are a few more but it's not really something to write home about and here where the excavator got stuck this is also all very dry there might still be some moisture down below and you can see other things also wanted to grow but this definitely is not what you would expect it just dries out because there's not enough biomass and without any irrigation which means to keep it artificially alive this does not really work so we do have an actual sunflower it's hard to walk here so there we have it this is a nice one but of course it has not grown very tall and if I pan around you see a little bit more and I will go there in a second So here, a little bit in the shade, there's also something. But it's not a success. And here is proof that biomass in the soil is key because here where we had the bovines and the pigs make compost and also we removed a lot of it to cover the berm in order to seed those broad beans this here is the area where it grew a lot better and you can clearly tell of course it's not perfect and it's also drying out and some of the corn I would think because it's a very short cycle corn uh, also decided to now cut off the supply at least those that are in direct sunlight so if I pan around yeah. yeah this is how it looks like you can see and if I come around here in the more shadier areas it does look a lot better 
We also had some visitors in here, so there was a wild pig that managed to find its way through the fence. We found the hole and got plucked, so no more wild pigs in here. So there are more little sunflowers. And here also the sound of my steps is different because I'm walking here on basically composted straw, but it's dry. Well, it's uh, soft and I sink in. So this wanted to create cop. So this is the successful failure. It is a failure from a perspective of a comp producer, obviously. But it is successful from the perspective of the experiment. So our problem is biomass in the soil and nutrients in the soil. And biomass is a different term for water retention. So we need to fix that. And with all the new, side, new ideas that you can also find on our website published. So there are detailed project plans, zone by zone, as we develop them. Um, this should solve this kind of problem. So let's assume for a second that this area here, which is some, yeah, so the area where the compost was, there was some maybe 2000 um, square meters. If this had been a fenced in area with irrigation, then this would be a corn paradise and the sunflowers and all that. And now it wasn't, so we definitely know the limit of the current system. But it will be, because now we will make sure that we add a lot, and I really mean a lot, truckloads of biomass that are missing. And then we open the valve and make sure that this area stays moist for as long as it needs to be. And we will do this zone by zone so that there will be no problem with anything that we plant. And over time, we can then gradually reduce the amount of water that each zone will require. The newer ones will require a lot, while the oldest one may not require anything, because what we plant includes also a lot of trees, and that removes um, the evaporation a lot. And so over time, we might manage to create deep soil that retains a lot of moisture. And due to the huge temperature difference between day and night, some 20 centigrades, given that there's enough moisture in the air, there is a lot of condensation. And that condensation should help to keep the forest alive. And that is the goal of this whole restoration project. Because we are trying to restore the soil here, so that eventually we can have a lot of very productive areas that provide us with something that we can offer. So the whole idea is, let's manage for abundance. And when there is abundance, we can then start selling the surplus step by step. And of course, we are not doing this for purely economic reasons. So there is an altruistic element in there and also an egoistic element in there because my family and I, we live here. So we want our surrounding to be nice. We don't live in the village and only come to visit our little factory. So that is why we take this totally different approach. 
And speaking about cops, so this one here managed to start to grow a cop. But of course, once the bovine family will discover this, they will just eliminate all of that. But that is okay, that is why we brought them here. Because this little patch here and all the other pieces that manage to stay green a little bit have protein and at least for today or one day it saves us the feedback. So that's also a benefit. Of course, from a purely economic point of view, this whole endeavor has been a failure, but we have learned a lot. And now we need to follow up so that the learning gives us a benefit and it's not a total failure. But there's something else that we also need to take care of tomorrow morning. And that is with regards to the Polovnia trees that are up there. I will show you a close-up. They need desperately some water as well. So these now very tall Polovnia trees, they have their leaves hanging and that means they are very thirsty. And the others there are not looking much different. So they are all in desperate need of a drink. And tomorrow morning the guys will reinstall the drip irrigation line and make sure that they will be kept alive because they will be very helpful in the near future. So we got half of the rain. Right now Spain is basically in Portugal on fire, the south of France as well. And somehow we manage to keep these things around because we have a little bit of water that we can distribute carefully. And we definitely need a lot more. So the more surface we can yeah, put in the shade, like under this tree there, the better it is. So we cannot run those sprinklers the whole day, which is why we are not doing that. But we can provide in certain areas additional moisture and simulate the rain. But the way to go is definitely to make those small areas could be a Miyawaki forest or could be simply to fill the void between the existing oak trees, so this area there. Which is why we had started to plant some Palovnia trees in order to fill the gap quickly. But then the wild boar came in and uprooted them. Um, some are still around and there is a drip irrigation line, as you can see there. So here we will continue, but this will be something for May next year to fill in those bright spots that are in the sun. Because here in the shade the situation is different. Of course we only had the broad beans here and it's also too hot for them now. But every piece of biomass counts and also the leaf litter is helpful. So we are building soil here and when the temperatures are colder and rain comes we will again seed something here in order to continue this process. But, like I was saying, we will do this in a more plant fashion in order to not overstretch because it will be no good to do everything in every place and then fall short on water. So we will focus on one area or two at a time and that's it. And when that is under control then we try the next one. And here and there it might be that we have to wait, we will see. But Go to kaimito.eu in the projects part and there you can see what is in scope and on schedule now or within the schedule and there you can see the details. Mr. Bull here has a serious problem since a couple of days. Yesterday the vet was here and he got injected with some anti-inflammatory medicine he has lost the fight two in a row with another bull and since then is here separated from the herd so that he can heal um, his right hind quarter, the right hind leg does not work as he would like 
it to behave. So he is hurting and uh, we keep him here so that he has some straw and he gets alfalfa pellets and he has the water all to his own in order to heal. The vet says he will be fine so it's not a big problem just that he needs to stay here. We also have another problem and that was one of the reasons for the vet visit yesterday uh, that one of our horses, one of our mares, Sakahawea, the Indian princess, seems to be going blind and uh, we determined yesterday that one of the eyes has lost the retina that got disconnected and the other one is in the same, um, yeah, going in the same direction. Uh, I'm showing you the bull and not the horse because the horse is somewhere else. Um, maybe there in the, in the very distance. Let me try to find her. Well, she's actually over there. There, there she is alone in the shade while the other horses are grazing in a different place. She's learning to deal with her new disability. We are still determined what to do. And when you see this video, we probably have found a good solution for her. I am on my way to a different location, so I can only show you the Mea Sakahawea from the distance. She's trying to stay there where there's shade and she knows the terrain. She can see something on the right side, but on the left side it's all dark. And she has stumbled over things because she could not see them. And the other horses are there in the paddock B3 and they are grazing. And she's staying in a well familiar territory. The guys are trying to do a kettle drive by pickup truck and it seems to be working. Here they are. But there's also one behind. We will bring them in here, the CT1, so that they can eat the little corn that we managed to grow despite all the challenges and difficulties. And they will stay here for a while so that they can also take care of all that old standing hay. So that this area also gets some manure. They know the area and they see that there is something that they can eat, so they go for it. It may be dry and they will discover the corn later, but it is food and it's different than the straw and alfalfa pellets they had over the last uh, yeah, weeks. So this is definitely something new and exciting.
they have gotten water inside so there is no reason for them to wander around which is why we will close this gate the whole area is about four hectares and they will have this to themselves now for a while this volunteer here is growing bigger and bigger we will see what the bovines think about it but maybe you guys have an idea what that is To find this is always also a very positive thing. These spider webs also catch some moisture. And of course it means that there's some wildlife, in this case insects. So this is part of habitat that also comes out of the activity. And here you have it. That is the larger pond in the swale that we have in city one. It is almost completely dry. So there's only some residue left. And we are not at the end of summer. So this will be completely dry in less than a week, I would say. And then it's all irrigation. So where there is no irrigation available and the plant cannot reach the water table, which is, I would guess now at three meters depth, that plant will not survive this summer. And for those who may not look for these things, I can share. Yesterday I looked at the newspaper. There is an electronic newspaper called Diario de Cordoba, and they publish the water levels of all the water reservoirs. Not the one that we have next to us, because this is not used for irrigation. But those that are used for irrigation are at an average of 20% of their capacity. And all the yeah, plant-based farmers, so to say, those that seed and uh, go crop, they are pretty desperate, because there's water rationing going on. The one that we have next to us, somewhere in that direction, it's 500 meters from our entrance, um, well, uh, from the road, um, but then there's another 500 meters to go, but it's pretty close. This one has 44 hectares in surface, and this is completely filled, but the municipality has offered the ranchers around here to take water by cistern truck out of it to water the livestock. So that is something new. It has never happened before. Um, we did not apply for that because we have enough from the wells that we have and the wells are fed by the very same water reservoir. But you can see the situation is dire. I'm not complaining because in comparison we are doing fine. But it's a sign of the times. So we need to continue what we started. And I think we will be fine over time. But definitely we will not repeat this. This is simply impossible in our situation. Despite the fact that some of the Crotalaria Hunsea, the sun hemp, um, managed to grow and even produce a flower because this is one so let's not do this again but the plant like I said in the other video is definitely something to continue using and we will because this is the right plant for our situation oh and uh, another word about those polovnia trees they are also supposed to fix nitrogen, which is a very positive thing. So that means they are a support species. And 
they react well apparently to chop and drop because if you fell a tree of this type it will grow back from the stump. So you plant it once and you can harvest it every so years and you will always have a tree for a very long time. So that is very interesting. So we definitely want to use a lot more of these and you guys who say, ah, you should use native trees. Uh, yes, we will also, but we also need to adapt to the changing climate. There is no point in clinging to the past and try to do what people have been doing for centuries here. The times have changed, apparently. So we need to adapt and do things that work in the new situation. Nothing against all the native trees, they will be there, we will plant a huge variety. So the nursery that we finally found in nearby Extremadura, close to Cáceres, again, see um, the project descriptions on Calmito EU, they have about 300 species and we will definitely use a lot of those. But we will also plant some cacti, like the prickly pear cacti, uh, cactus, and I have seen it around here, so it's kind of a native, also it's nopal from Mexico. But you have to mix and play what works. Not stick to things just because this has been here and has been done in this way for so long. Times are now different. It appears that this one has seen something green. Let's see what will happen. There are more behind her. And by now it's pretty clear that they're going for the corn. So this is today's feedback. They first sniff on things and then they go for it. a bit. They have not yet eaten corn before. And I need to say it's about the leaves, it's not about the cobs. So they are not being grain fed because there is no grain. So I can say by now quite a few are in there and in the afternoon this will be gone. So that is pretty nice. Let me give you some close-up here on that vetiver in the almost drying out or almost dried out um, former pond area. They have created roots, most of them, and our intention is now to leave this drip irrigation on for a while. Vitiva is a swamp grass but also survives for a very long time without water. 
because swamps can fall dry and about falling dry this looks very impressive it's a nice pattern but it's also a story that is sad so if you see this in a landscape it is very sad but this is just here this pond area so back to the vetiver you see yeah, it has rooted and is growing and the idea is to let this grow very tall two meter long leaves and the better it grows the better it will be for this pond area here and in a little while we will plant more of it higher up and also on the other side but for now this is what we want and in the near future the very same vetiver that you see here can be the rootstock for the vetiver a little bit higher because we can take plant one plant out split it into well, 30 50 slips and use those to fill the area and put one slip back where the mother plant set so that is how you can easily propagate it it just takes a little bit of time and the effort is not that huge looks like they all found the spot by now and I will leave them now and close the door the door is this gate and it's now shut so they have water inside they can stay there for a while as long as there is some standing hay and we can feed them alfalfa pellets after the corn is gone maybe from the shade of this oak tree here one more thought about the grazing so the plan is like i said um, to focus on smaller areas and do some agriculture in those areas but the grazing of course will go on so when in september we get some rain then of course all this dehesa will spring to life and uh, become green again and this is what the people here in this area are so proud of because once there is moisture there is a lot of plants coming up and this goes on until late spring and early summer when it will then look like it's looking right now so that means when in september we had it at the first of september we had it at the last day of september the rain comes then some three weeks later we definitely have a lot of new forage and then of course we will continue with our rotational grazing according to the plan and the application that we have that guides us right now grazing is more or less paused and but we do do um, grazing but we do this in certain areas like this one here or the areas where you saw them in earlier videos kind of compost duty as before so once the whole area becomes green again they will go on their rotation so that means going forward you will see two things we will do plant grazing in all the paddocks that we have created so far and we will continue to make a few smaller ones out of the bigger ones and at the same time we work on our plant projects in those zones that will then either become a forest for a while or become an area for some crop to feed the pigs and the bovines and so on so you have um, basically two strings that are moving forward one is the grazing and the other one is let's call it agriculture and that is how we will divide our forces in order to get this place green that was it for today i hope it was interesting to watch mr bull here is very likely to recover so says the wet so let's hope for the best and knock on wood and for more please come back in a few days to see how we continue till then take care